the Collaborative Enhancement Projects are an opportunity for two or more providers to work together on a topic of mutual interest. It's part of our membership offer and so the projects are primarily focused on our voluntary members based in England, but you might choose to partner with uh, an institution based in another part of the UK or even seek an international partner. A key element though is that you should be willing to lead on a piece of work which um, will benefit those providers involved directly in the collaboration, but which ultimately is likely to be of benefit to wider numbers of QAA members or possibly even the whole sector. Um, so you'll be leading the work. Uh, what QAA brings is a small amount of funding and access to our large network of contacts. So lots of opportunities for exchanging ideas um, and disseminating the outcomes of your work. There is also the potential that your activity can influence um, sector policy and practice through our close links with government and other key bodies. Um, we'll be keen to fund projects which are likely to have a tangible benefit on the student learning experience um, and I'm really keen to see projects and ideas that engage staff with a wide range of roles. That's a, 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 an important part of it, as is um, projects that involve students and um, particularly directly in um, leading and, and um, delivering the project itself. That's an exciting element. But actually, you might come up with an idea for a topic and a way of running the project that we haven't thought of. And actually, I really hope you do, because that's the uh, wonderful thing about working Working in this model. Um, it's an opportunity to hear colleagues' ideas, some of which will be very new and different, and um, some of which you might have been thinking about for quite some time, but just haven't quite had the opportunity to engage in exactly this way. So all kinds of ideas, and I am so looking forward to hearing your proposals um, and working with you in this format. Um, but you don't need to take my word for, um, for this kind of project, because I'm delighted to introduce to you now Professor Elizabeth Cleaver, who uh, was one of the leaders of a collaborative cluster, so this type of project that we ran as part of the enhancement themes in Scotland. Um, so I'm really pleased that she's able to talk to you now. Thank you so much for listening and um, I'm looking forward to seeing those proposals coming in. Thank you. Hello, I'm Liz Cleaver and I was lucky enough to have taken part in one of the QA Scotland's most recently funded Enhancement Themes Collaborative Cluster Projects. Our particular project was called Beyond the Metrics, the Intangibles, and like all good projects, it developed out of a really great conversation with a colleague, Alistair Robertson, who was then at Abertay University. It started after hearing an item on Radio 4's Start the Week about the intangible economy, and Alistair connected us up to the Collaborative Cluster process, and out of that, our collaborative project grew. It was undertaken as a partnership between Alistair at Apate, Fiona Smart at Edinburgh Napier, and me, then, at UB Bristol. The Intangibles project focused on creating a method of identifying and showing the value of those important aspects of our higher education provision that can't be counted or easily quantified but that nevertheless form the heartbeat of our provision and we know are really key to its success. So things like developing a culture of care, creating a sense of belonging for those who work or study at our universities and working with students to develop their professional identities as they study. So how did we do it? We held workshops on identifying intangible assets with around 150 individuals, both students and staff, from across the Scottish and the English higher education sectors. Associated with this, we developed an institutional mapping tool based on cultural mapping methodologies to help us to explore and show the value of these intangible assets. Importantly, the mapping tool allows us to identify and map intangible assets at a range of le levels across the institution. So from the whole institution's strategic level, right down to the module or the service delivery level. We've now used the model for a range of purposes across the sector, including developing subject TEF narratives and are continuing to take feedback and to develop its use as it rolls out in practice. The benefits of participation in the project were immense for me. At one level, it provided me and my colleagues 
with an opportunity to explore an idea and the backing to develop outputs that could be tried and tested in the sector. The project also introduced me to a whole new set of literatures and understandings around intangible cultural assets, something I'd never have explored without it. And for someone who comes from south of the border, it also offers me a first-hand opportunity to engage with the amazing collaborative culture of enhancement that sits at the heart of the sector in Scotland. <laughs>